Now that we've seen how to add inline styles by binding to the style attribute, let's now see how we can use classes for styling. While it's convenient and sometimes necessary to use the style attribute, it's considered best practice to write CSS in external style sheets and apply styles to elements based on classes and element IDs. I have already prepared some simple CSS classes in advance, which you can see on the right side. Suppose that we have an array of shapes, which can be either a circle or a square in this example, and that each square has some common styles associated with it. We distinguish circles from squares by having an isRound property on each shape object. With this, I can make a div element which iterates through the shapes array by using the v4 directive. I'll just write that before we get into determining which classes should be on the div elements. So going to the template, say div class equals shape and v, whoops, v4 shape in shapes. Notice that we'll always add the shape class. Similarly to how we bound an object to the style attribute in the previous lecture, will bind an object to the class attribute now. So I'll just reformat this slightly and I'll say v bind to the class attribute and whoops, an empty object for now. Now the syntax for this object is slightly different in the context of the class attribute. The keys of the object should match the class names and the values should be an expression that evaluates to a boolean. If the boolean is true, then the class is added, and otherwise it will not be added to the DOM. Therefore, you can add classes to the object, even if you don't know if they are going to be added at runtime, something that we're going to do now. The first class that we will conditionally add is circle, so I will enter that as the first key within the object. As for the expression, I'm going to use the alias for the current iteration of the loop, which is shape. If the isRound property is true on this object, then I want to add the circle class. So I'll just do this like so. So if the isRound property in the shape object is true, then the circle class is added. If it's false, then the class will not be added to the DOM. Now we have checked if the shape is a circle but we also need to check whether or not it's a square, and if so, add the appropriate class. So let's do the same for the square class, except that we need to negate the expression. So square, and I'll add an exclamation mark. I'll say shape does is round exactly as before. With this, each div element will contain the shape class plus either circle or square. And let's run the code. As we can tell based on the styling, the first shape is indeed a circle, which matches with what is defined in the shape object, and sure enough, the second shape is a square, so everything looks good. Obviously, this code doesn't go so well with more than two shapes in terms of the isRound property, so let's add a third shape to the mix, a triangle. I have already added the CSS styling, so we only need to assign two classes to a div to turn it into a triangle the triangle class and a class specifying the direction of the triangle, which can be either up, down, left or right. Well, now we can clearly see that the isRound property was not the best idea in the world. So let's get rid of it and add a more generic property which holds the type of the shape. I will name it shape. So let's say shape here and I'll change it to a string. This one is a circle and this one is a square. We can now make the assumption that the value of the shape property will match a CSS class for a given shape. So how do we apply this class to the div element? When we supply an object as the binding to the class attribute, we specify the class name as object keys, but we need something more dynamic in this case. We can solve this by using an alternative syntax, which lets us specify an array instead of an object. 
This allows us to specify an array of expressions, where each expression can be a string or the name of a data property, for instance. So let's clear out what we already had and start over and use the array syntax. So I'll add an empty array. Adding the appropriate class now is as easy as typing the name of the property containing the class. In this case, the shape property on the shape alias. So shape.shape. .shape. Running the code now will reveal that we got the circle and the square shapes working again, this time in a more dynamic fashion. So far so good. Let's now work on the triangles. So we need to add some objects to the shapes array. The class name for the triangle shape is not so surprisingly triangle. And besides that, we need to specify a direction, which can be either up, down, left or right. I'll just add a triangle for each direction. So moving down here, add a new object, a shape of triangle and a new direction property. Let's say this one is up. I'll just copy this and add three more like so. And I'll say right, down and left for the directions. Now for the triangles to show up, we need to add the direction as a class too, as I have added styles for the different directions within the style sheet. But wait, not all shapes have a direction. So how can we add classes dynamically? Remember that the array syntax allows us to add expressions. So we can actually add a shorthand if statement to check whether or not there is a direction property for the current shape. So let me just begin to type that out. So if the direction property contains a true fee value, i.e. not undefined, we'll add the value of the property as a class. And otherwise we'll add an empty string, which will obviously not do anything. And now we should see the triangles appear. So let's try again. And sure enough, now we see four amazing looking triangles. But let's take it one step further because I want to show you something else we can do with the array syntax. Suppose that we want to apply an animation to some of the shapes when we load the page. I have already added a class named animate down at the bottom of my styles. So all we need to do is to add this class to a shape to make it animate. But first we need to know which shapes should animate. So I will add a boolean property named animate to a couple of the shapes. So let's add it to the square, I'll say animate colon true and copy this. I'll add it to this triangle and let's add it to the last one as well. All right, so now we actually face a small problem. How do we add the animate class to the shape depending on the truthiness of the animate property? Since we know the name of the class, we could use another shorthand if statement, but I want to show you a cleaner way of doing it. We started out by adding an object as the binding, which allowed us to toggle classes based on a Boolean value. This would be of use to us right now. So luckily this is also possible with the array syntax. What we can do is to add an object following the same syntax as we saw earlier to the array. Since we want to toggle the animate class, we will use this as the object key and the value will simply be the animate property on the shape alias, which contains a boolean value. So let me begin to type that out for you. So I'll add the object here as the next element within the array and use the animate key and the shape.animate property here. If the property does not exist, the evaluation will be false and the class will not be added. When I run the code now, notice how three of the shapes animate because the animate class was added to those shapes. As you can see, the array syntax provides a lot of flexibility as you can mix strings, data properties, objects and more. Working with objects shares a lot of the same features as we saw in the previous lecture with the style attribute such as merging classes, referencing computed properties, 
or data properties instead of inline expressions and more. But since we have already seen this, I don't want to take up more of your time by showing you the same thing again. Now that we have gone through a few examples of how to apply styles to HTML, it's time to use this knowledge in practice by solving a few exercises.